OpenAI's is dev day just happened and it comes with four big updates. So the real time API, vision fine tuning, prompt caching, as well as distillation. First, let's dive into the real time API. So this is going to be how developers can leverage and build applications that are similar to ChatGPT's advanced voice mode, which you've probably seen demos of. They have this new real-time API support for natural speech-to-speech -speech conversations, but they also are introducing the ability to have audio input and output from the chat completions API. One of the nice things with the chat completions model is you can pass in text, audio, or both into the input. The way that the real-time API works is through a persistent webhook connection. One of the issues with the previous approach of if you wanted to pass in speech to a model is you'd first have to pass it into something like Whisper, and then you'd have to pass in the text that you got back from Whisper into a model for inference. What happens with this approach as they describe is it results in loss of emotion, emphasis, access, in addition to that, also the latency. The way that this works for building it out within an application is it's through a persistent WebSocket connection. Essentially, as you're speaking into your microphone, it's going to be streaming that response to the OpenAI endpoint and vice versa. It's going to be streaming those responses back that you can consume within your application. Now, something that I'm personally excited about is that this API supports function calling. Just think about that. You can speak to the model. And if all of a sudden you wanted to invoke different actions, whether it's within a web app or within a mobile app or what have you, now if it detects that a function needs to be invoked, it could change the UI in your application, right? Or do something to that effect. Function calling is going to be what gives it the ability to really create killer applications on this and go beyond just making like a wrapper on the voice to voice interaction that you'd have. You're going to be able to create interesting things and imagine interesting ideas. Now, in terms of availability, and if you're going to be using the WebSocket route of the real-time API, there is the 4.0 real-time preview endpoint. Alternatively, if you're going to be using the chat completions API, you can use the GPT-4.0 audio preview. In terms of pricing for the real-time preview, for the text, it's broken out just like this, $5 per million tokens of input, $20 per million tokens of output. But the big numbers here are going to be the $100 per million tokens of input and $200 per million tokens of output. Now, that sounds like a lot, and it definitely is, but this is brand new, and I'd imagine this is really going to drive lower over the coming year. Just to put this into perspective, it's about $0.06 cents per minute of input and then $0.24 cents per minute of output. Just imagine having a conversation back and forth with the model, and you'll probably be able to get a pretty good sense on how much it would cost. Now, with this being said, we have seen over the past years with OpenAI and other model providers that as soon as the models come out, they are more expensive. But in the months and years after the model comes out, we do see that those prices dramatically trend lower. I would just be mindful of that when you're considering building an application with this. So another great thing is now you can fine tune the image API. I think we're definitely gonna see a lot more use cases in terms of agents within the browser or agents on your laptop or agents even on your mobile device by now being able to pass in these images and fine tune a model based on your specific use case. Next up is prompt caching. This is something that we saw come out originally from Google with their Gemini Flash model, I believe. And then more recently, we also saw this with the Claude series of models as well. And what this allows you to do is if you're passing in the same context repeatedly to whatever your application is doing, what you can do now is you can cache that context instead of continually having to pass that in to the API and incurring that increased cost for it. You can see the pricing table here where essentially across the board and even on the new models, you're able to use this. And the prompt caching is going to be priced at half the price of both the inputs and outputs. We'll put all of the links within the description of the video if you're interested in diving into any of this further. The next thing is model distillation within the API. You can fine tune a cost efficient model with the outputs of a larger model all within their platform. What this allows you to do is you can take a model like O1 Preview and GPT-4.0 and you can fine tune and improve the performance of models like GPT-4.0 Mini. And you can do this all within their platform. Model distillation, as they call it, involves fine tuning smaller models that are cost efficient using the outputs of more capable models. Say if you have a particular use case but you can't use the O1 series of models because it's cost prohibitive or maybe it's not fast enough depending on the use case. And you can use that within their smaller model. There are also a couple examples within the playground here, which you can check out. All right, so the last thing that I wanted to show you is they also put out an open source repository for how to use the real-time API. Within this example, you can see it's streaming to the server, streaming to the client. And it also has some examples on how the function calling capability works 
within this. We'll also put the link to this within the description of the video if you're interested. Otherwise, that's it for this video. If you found this video useful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, until the next one.